When we think about the core elements of horror lighting, there's a lot of colour to it. A bloody red for villainous moments, a sickly green for a monstrous scare, a cold blue for the dark forest filled with frights. However, while colour is often used to convey certain aspects of horror, that form of lighting is only used when the characters are caught within the web of the film's scariest moments. Throughout other parts of the film, the lighting is going to look relatively normal. Or is it? You see, mixed in with the horror, there will be regular moments of any scary film. This is where the audience will bond with the protagonist and learn of the evil threat. The filmmakers will set the location's geography, establish the lore, and highlight any important details relevant to the story. However, during these moments, it would be impractical to illuminate everything with a horrifying colour palette, yet conversely, it would also be improper to illuminate these normal scenes the same way if you were to light a romance film. This is because throughout a horror film, the film's tone still needs to be established. The audience needs to be visually told that the world the characters reside in is not safe, and they are in danger. This can be expressed through several mediums such as music, camera angles, and as the title suggests, lighting. Today, following a walkthrough process, let's have a look at how we can set the tone with just one film light. Using this premise, we're going to turn a normalised nighttime scene into something that sets the tone for tension. In low budget fashion, we're only going to use one light, and with two practicals. This is our shot just using household lighting. It's flat, boring, and downright uninspired. We need to fix this. Equally, it should be noted that in typical low budget fashion, we don't have a lot of space between the couch and where the camera is. The singular light I will be using is the small and light aperture 120D, and initially, I'm gonna place the key light 45 degrees to the subject. But the issue is, using the aperture 120D in its default state produces a very hard light, and this is also at 10% power. Even if we increase the aperture to decrease the exposure, the light direction is also slightly abnormal for an interior location. Because the space is small and the framing is on a 25mm lens, it's not going to be practical to set up a diffusion sheet. Therefore, you may initially gravitate towards a softbox, but there are two issues in doing so. The first is that softboxes are generally very large and it's not ideal for this type of framing. Now, of course, using a C-stand, I can raise the light and angle it downward. While this is infinitely better than the light in its default hard state, it doesn't give off horror vibes, and it's because the softbox has a large diffusion area, it's not only illuminating the subject, but the area behind him too, and it just doesn't seem right. First, let's look at using a different diffusion tool. Instead of the overly large softbox, I'm going to look at using the Aperture Lantern. This is an omnidirectional diffusion tool, and infinitely smaller than a softbox. Now initially, the lantern isn't doing much better than the softbox, we're still getting way too much light onto the walls and the background. But as noted, this is an omnidirectional tool, meaning that the light is bounced outward at all angles. As such, you would primarily want to use this when the light is facing downward, perhaps at a dinner table, so you're getting that overly ambient spread of light opposed to a singular spot. So let's attach a boom arm, and now the light can do just that. Now, when the light is illuminated from directly above the actor, it does several things, like extenuate facial features and wrinkles, but primarily it creates shadows under the eyes because the brow ridge blocks the light. And when we can't see the subject's eyes or a person in general, it makes us feel uneasy. As noted by the famous saying, eyes are a window into the soul. When that window is closed off, it creates a level of uncertainty, even if the eyes we are looking into are that of our hero. Placing the 120D and the lantern directly above the actor, it's now given us this moody form of lighting, which is much better than where we were with the 120D or the softbox. However, we now still have an inherent problem. Due to the ambient fall off of this particular tool, too much of the apartment is being illuminated and darkness is a core staple of horror. Thankfully, this lantern in particular comes with a four section fully adjustable light control skirt that allows you to shield the light in a multitude of directions. Now in doing so, we have a more focused overhead light, just as if the characters sat under their dimly lit household light in their way too empty apartment. This is looking great, but we need the tone to be slightly more menacing to fully promote the horror element. To do this, we're going to reduce the amount of lighting that's hitting the side of the actor's face that we are filming from. Now when the key light is hitting the side of the actor's face that is away from the camera, this is referred to as a far side key. Again, in doing this, for this particular scene, it adds to the ominous tone. Now because we are in a tight, typical low budget space, 
due to the proximity of the light and bringing one of the control skirts up to shield that area, we can see that there's still too much spill onto the actor. Therefore, I'm going to use the flag to gently block this light. Now because the light itself is diffused and the flag is close to the light, the shadows will be soft and feathered and look quite natural. Remember, the further away your flag is from the light, the harder the shadow will be. Overall, we can see that the face is still illuminated, but the side closest to us has less value than his other cheek. While this looks great, we need some background separation. It's too dark, even for a horror. So first, we're just going to turn on the computer screen, as the character did that within the scene, and then in the very background, we're going to turn on this practical. Because we're lighting our talent with a cold light, I've inserted a 2700K bulb into this practical, so it's a lot warmer. And while this will add dimension to the scene, the difference in color temperature will also add compositional separation between the foreground and the background, and allowing us to focus primarily on the cold foreground. Now what we have by using just one film light and a small selection of tools is a very moody and sinister looking image. And if I were this character, I wouldn't feel too safe about going into the kitchen.